building careers and fortunes off of Henrietta's cells without her or her family's consent, or even knowledge until decades later. So think about the amount of money that came from her cells and researching her cells and the fact that her family could not get any compensation from this. This also goes into the theme of how black people are treated in this country. We've been tested, poked and prodded and the results are used to make other people rich while we still continue to suffer in the process. This is something that a lot of people don't talk about. If you haven't heard about Henrietta Lacks, this is the time to learn about her now. Do you know who Henrietta Lacks is? If you haven't, not to worry, I got you. Henrietta Lacks is a woman that was born in the 30s. She will be over 100 years old today. Unfortunately, because of Henrietta Lacks and how she, what basically the medical community did to her, um, it's, it's a benefit, yet at the same time, it's still a tragedy. So let's go into what Henrietta Lacks, uh, the story of Henrietta Lacks from John Hopkins University first. And then once we go from them, then we shall continue because they give a little bit of their own, how should I say, their own, it's kind of revision of what happened, right? So let's get into it. So this is from John Hopkins says the his honoring Henrietta. So says in 1951, a young mother of five named Henrietta Lacks visited the John Hopkins Hospital complaining of vaginal bleeding. Upon examination, renowned gynecologist Dr. Howard Jones discovered a large malignant tumor in her cervix. At the time, the John Hopkins Hospital was one of only a few hospitals to treat poor African Americans. As medical records show, Ms. Lax, Mrs. Lax began undergoing radium treatments for her cervical cancer. This was the best medical treatment available at the time for this terrible disease. A sample of her cancer cells retrieved during a biopsy were sent to Dr. George Gay's Gies, I think his name is, nearby tissue lab. For years, Dr. Guy, a prominent cancer and virus researcher, had been collecting cells from all patients, regardless of their race or socioeconomic status, who came to the John Hopkins Hospital with cervical cancer, but each sample quickly died in Dr. Guy's lab. What Dr. Guy would soon discover was that Mrs. Lack's cells were unlike any other he has ever seen. Where other cells would die, Ms. Lack's cells Mrs. Lack's cells double every 20 to 24 hours. Today, these incredible cells, named HeLa cells from the first two letters of her first and last names, are used to study the effects of toxins, drugs, hormones, and viruses on the growth of cancer cells without experimenting on humans. They have been used to test the effects of radiation and poisons, to study the human genome, to learn more about how viruses work and played a crucial role and development of the polio and C-19 vaccines. Although Mrs. Lax ultimately passed away on October 4th of 1951 at the age of 31, her cells continue to impact the world. So I'm not gonna read this entire thing, but that's what they said, that they just procured somehow the cells from Henrietta Lax. Now, Let's get into why this was controversial. Uh, and then we'll get into what happened further. So let me do this. All right. 
and share the screen once more so that you guys can get this. All right. All right. This woman sells reads for research on COVID, polio, cancer, and so much more, but her cells were taken without her consent. Let's talk about Henrietta Lacks. Her contributions to medicine have unlocked medical achievements in every industry. At the young age of 31, Henrietta died of cervical cancer. But before her death and without her consent, doctors removed some of her tumor cells and sent them to Johns Hopkins researchers. Henrietta's cells were found to rapidly multiply, a breakthrough that no other human cell had achieved. Doctors created a patent on the HeLa line, but hid her true identity under a fake name, Helen Lane. In the 70 years since her death, her cells have been bought, sold, packaged, and shipped by trillions of laboratories. And her cells have been used in 74,000 studies and have even won Nobel Prizes. Her cells have even been sent into space to examine them under spaceflight. But Henrietta, who was poor, black, and had little education, was never recognized. It wasn't until 2020 that reparations were started. This woman sells reads for research. So, essentially, her cells were taken without consent. That's a lot. This is why a lot of times before they take any samples from you, when you go to a medical facility now, you have to sign consent now because ultimately what they did was essentially unethical. Even though it led to the even though it led to the developments of many essential technological advances medically, the way they went about it was unethical. And that's why I think it's so important that we discuss the story. So let me share this. I'm going to share this quick video and then it gets just a little bit deeper rather than just a short uh, TikTok video. So they're talking about Henrietta Lacks as well. Imagine something small enough to float on a particle of dust that holds the keys to understanding cancer, virology, and genetics. Luckily for us, such a thing exists in the form of trillions upon trillions of human lab-grown cells called HeLa. Let's take a step back for a second. Scientists grow human cells in the lab to study how they function, understand how diseases develop, and test new treatments without endangering patients. To make sure that they can repeat these experiments over and over, and compare the results with other scientists, they need huge populations of identical cells that can duplicate themselves faithfully for years. But until 1951, all human cell lines that researchers tried to grow had died after a few days. Then a Johns Hopkins scientist named George Guy received a sample of a strange looking tumor, dark purple, shiny, jelly-like. This sample was special. Some of its cells just kept dividing and dividing and dividing. When individual cells died, generations of copies took their place and thrived. The result was an endless source of identical cells that's still around today, the very first immortal human cell line. Guy labeled it HeLa after the patient with the unusual tumor, Henrietta Lacks. Born on a tobacco farm in Virginia, she lived in Baltimore with her husband and five children. She died of aggressive cervical cancer a few months after her tumor's cells were harvested, and she never knew about them. That's the part that a lot of people are upset about. So while they were basically testing, doing a biopsy on the cells, they took some, and then they used it to research, and then they started growing more of those cells in the lab in order to test on more of those. And so this was one of the biggest issues. It was taken without her consent. Let's continue. 
So what's so special about the cells from Henrietta Lacks that lets them survive when other cell lines die? The short answer is, we don't entirely know. Normal human cells have built-in control mechanisms. They can divide about 50 times before they self-destruct in a process called apoptosis. This prevents the propagation of genetic errors that creep in after repeated rounds of division. But cancer cells ignore these signals, dividing indefinitely and crowding out normal cells. Still, most cell lines eventually die off, especially outside the human body. Not HeLa, though, and that's the part we can't yet explain. Regardless, when Dr. Guy realized he had the first immortal line of human cells, he sent samples to labs all over the world. Soon the world's first cell production facility was churning out 6 trillion HeLa cells a week. And scientists put them to work, in an ethically problematic way, building careers and fortunes off of Henrietta's cells without her or her family's consent, or even knowledge until decades later. So think about the amount of money that came from her cells and researching her cells and the fact that her family could not get any compensation from this. This also goes into the theme of how black people are treated in this country. We've been tested poked and prodded and the results are used to make other people rich while we still continue to suffer in the process. This is something that a lot of people don't talk about. If you haven't heard about Henrietta Lacks, this is the time to learn about her now. And this is also a narrative that has continued in the black community for a long time. Let's continue. The polio epidemic was at its peak in the early 50s. HeLa cells, which easily took up and replicated the virus, allowed Jonas Salk to test his vaccine. They've been used to study diseases, including measles, mumps, HIV, and Ebola. We know that human cells have 46 chromosomes because a scientist working with HeLa discovered a chemical that makes chromosomes visible. HeLa cells themselves actually have around 80 highly mutated chromosomes. HeLa cells were the first to be cloned. They've traveled to outer space. Telomerase, rays, an enzyme that helps cancer cells evade destruction by repairing their DNA, was discovered first in HeLa cells. In an interesting turn of fate, Thanks to HeLa, we know that cervical cancer can be caused by a virus called HPV, and now there's a vaccine. Just to let you guys know, um, as far as that vaccine is concerned, it's now being given to pretty much all young ladies, young women, females in the United States so that it can prevent them from getting cervical cancer. I, I don't know if you guys remember a few years back, there was this huge campaign of getting your child vaccinated for uh, cervical cancer, especially it started off with girls. But then what happened? They started giving the vaccine to boys. And so now boys are now also given that because HPV, human papillomavirus, is can be transmitted through boys to girls, right? Especially if the male is not circumcised. So now because we have that vaccine, the necessity for circumcision actually is pretty much non-existent now. So that goes to show where because of Henrietta Lacks, right? Now we have these vaccines further that actually help us to be able to evade these different viruses as well, including the virus that essentially killed Henrietta Lacks in the first place. HeLa fuel discoveries have filled thousands of scientific papers, and that number is probably even higher than anyone knows. HeLa cells are so resilient that they can travel on almost any surface. 
a lab worker's hand, a piece of dust, invading cultures of other cells and taking over like weeds. Countless cures, patents, and discoveries all made thanks to Henrietta Lacks. So that is how powerful this is. And I want people to realize. Now, here's the question. Did her family benefit from this? You look at my face and tell me if that actually happened. You know. Especially y'all who are black. Y'all know. Ain't nothing, Kate. Y'all know. So I have this to share as well. So there has been a development because Henrietta Lacks family has went to court basically for saying that they should benefit from her essentially the donation of herself. So let's get into that because I think that this is deeply important. So this is the primary part of the story that I want to get into. Finally, after more than 70 years, a measure of justice for the family of Henrietta Lacks, whose cells were taken without her family's consent and led to groundbreaking medical discoveries. Here's Jake Ward. Henrietta Lacks is inside all of us in treatments and vaccines her cells made possible. And tonight, her family is finally being compensated for her contributions. Such sacrifice that she had to give of herself that benefited all the world. Lacks died of cervical cancer in 1951 at Johns Hopkins, where, in a racially segregated ward, doctors cut out a sample of her cancer cells without her permission. The cells, nicknamed HeLa, were the first to grow well in a lab and are now a bedrock of modern medicine. Her family sued multi-billion dollar Thermo Fisher Scientific in 2021, saying the company, quote, made staggering profits by using the HeLa cell line Although it, quote, has known that HeLa cells were stolen from Ms. Lax. Stolen. Let's, that, let, let's, let's call a thing a thing. They stole her cells. And then used the cells to make billions, billions of dollars off of her. And yet her family, did they get any compensation for it? Did she get any compensation for it? Yep. Nope. Of a black woman. Seems to be the theme that happens throughout the history of this country. How black and brown women are constantly being used and then thrown away. This is why we need to treat them better. I have some things I got to say after this, but let's continue. The family settled for an undisclosed amount Monday. Thermo Fisher says it's pleased the case is resolved, but had no further comment. Today on her 103rd birthday, we got justice. Her legacy is in good hands. Our family is standing together in solidarity to push forward. We're going to keep making sure Henrietta never dies, such as her healer cells never died. Lax was an impoverished tobacco farmer, a mother of five when she developed cervical cancer and never knew that her unique cells would be part of everything from genome mapping to the eradication of polio. And Hopkins made all that money off of our mother. The immortal life of Henrietta Lax brought worldwide attention to her contribution and to unethical experimentation on black bodies by medical science. There just isn't a moment in medical history that you that doesn't somehow connect to herself. A bipartisan bill introduced last week would give Lax a congressional gold medal. And now her family, several of whom suffered chronic illness without health insurance over the years, will share in the bounty that her body made possible. Jake Ward, NBC News. The fact that her family members don't have adequate health care and yet these medical technology companies made billions off of her cells? That's wild, isn't it? 
How would you feel if your cells were taken without your consent and used in research, which caused many medical breakthroughs? And in doing so, these companies made billions in profit just from you. How would you feel? The ruling to, or the settling of this case for an undisclosed amount, so it could be within the millions upon millions of dollars. That reparations. I know some people are going to get mad and be like, well, you know, reparations is something that should be paid to the people who are actually affected. Well, no, because guess what? It actually affected her family too. They, I mean, she died at 31. And these companies made millions and millions off of her. So, of course, reparations is owed. This is why the profit motive must be taken out of healthcare. If we had a national healthcare system that didn't make profit, then this story would have been less egregious. Would it have still have been bad? Yes, because they did take her cells without her consent. But what made it worse is that they made billions of dollars from her cells and innovation from research while many of her surviving family members struggled financially. We black people have been used. We've been experimented on. And they have profited off of our bodies without us receiving one iota of compensation for it. Modern gynecology wouldn't exist without the enslaved females that were operated on without anesthesia. The Tuskegee experiments were a horrible chapter in our history and how black men were treated in regards to medical science. So when we talk about wanting to change the system, this is one of the reasons why. And so I am happy that they are getting the reparations that's due to them. And so that's the latest developments on Henrietta Lacks and also her cells continue to develop medical technology even down to this day, which I am grateful for because it most likely also contributed to why I'm still alive today. So, Despite the way they got yourselves, thank you to Miss Henrietta Lacks for your sacrifice. And I hope that your family is made whole again. Thank you so very much for watching my channel. And I deeply appreciate it from the top and bottom of my heart. If you wish to support the channel further so I can keep bringing you content that is educational and informative, you can become a patron on patreon.com forward slash jbfond. You can find that link in the pinned comment or in the description below. No matter what you give, you'll be supporting independent media and education that helps make the world better. Thank you so much. And you can watch more of my content here. Forehead kisses and have a beautiful day.